Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching Yee Mr. Easy. And welcome to a new video for A Level for Elements. And today, we have 1.4 roots of quadratic equations for the rules and examples video. And we'll get started with complex conjugate pair. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never on any future videos. And we'll get started with complex conjugate pair. So imagine, as mentioned in the last few videos, complex conjugate pairs come in, they are like basically complex conjugate. So let's say if the complex number z is z equals a plus bi, that means the conjugate of z will be equal to z uh, asterisk equals a minus bi. Well, basically the sign before the imaginary unit is flipped. So using this knowledge or this logic, we know that for real numbers a, b, and c, if the roots of the quadratic equation a z squared plus b z plus c equals zero are non-real complex numbers, or basically they are non-real, then they occur as a conjugate pair. Right, so. so here we have more for roots of quadratic equations. So here's some note for solving quadratic equations or solving equations. So suppose that we're solving this equation x squared plus 4x minus 5. We will then factorize the equation to get x plus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0, right? And therefore x equals minus 5 and x equals 1. So it's just quite standard. And the converse or the opposite is also true, where if you knew the roots of quadratic equations were minus 5 and 1, then using the factor theorem, we know that x plus 5 and x minus 1, they are factors of the equation or of the whole equation or the solution. And thus, the original equation will be equal to x plus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0, which basically links to the, the start right here. And using this knowledge or this logic, we know that if alpha and beta were to be the roots of the quadratic equation, then the equation can be written as x minus alpha times x minus beta equals 0. And if we were to expand the whole thing, x minus alpha times x minus beta, it will be equal to x squared minus bracket alpha plus beta close x plus alpha times beta. So here's just the most basic thing that you have to know for the topic complex numbers, and we'll look more into this in chapter 4 for roots of polynomials. Right, so. so here we just have, we have some examples to show what I mean. So given that z equals 5 over th uh, 3 minus i, find z in the form of a plus bi where a and b are real constants. So we just have to find the complex conjugate of the denominator and times the top and bottom by it. So the denominator is 3 minus i. That means the conjugate will be 3 plus i. So z equals 5 times 3 plus i over 3 minus i times 3 plus i. And by timesing the bottom and the top by the conjugate, the conjugate of, of uh, 3 minus 1, we can just eliminate the imaginary unit at the bottom. So the top will be 15 plus 5i, and the bottom will be 3 times 3, which is 9. So 9. And then the second term and the third term, which is 3i times minus 3i, they cancel out, so we just ignore them. And the last one will be minus i times i, which is plus 1. So therefore, we can just simplify to get 15i, so 15 plus 5i over 10. And therefore, we can just simplify to get 15 minus 10, oh sorry, 15 over 10 is for the real part, which can then be simplified into 3 over 2, over 2, plus 1 over 2i, like so. And given that z is a complex root of the quadratic equations x squared plus px plus q, where p and q are real integers, find the values of p and q. So we know z is the root, that means this is the root right here, z, that's z. So z equals 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2i. That means the other root will must be z asterisk is a complex conjugate pair, which is 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2i. So these two are the roots for the quadratic equation. So using the knowledge just now, we know that, let me just move back. We know, oops, move back right here. So if alpha and beta were to be the roots of quadratic, that means x plus alpha minus, uh, times by x minus beta equals this right here. So we can use the same knowledge, or the same logic. So it will basically be x squared minus z plus z, the complex conjugate, 
plus z times z hundred like so equal to zero. So therefore it will be let me just write it out. It will be x squared minus z plus z conjugate will be equal to three plus two. So three over two plus one over two i plus this right here. So we can notice that the imaginary parts cancel out because it's one plus two i minus one minus two i. So we just ignore them. So we're just left with the real part, which is three plus two. So three over two plus three over two. So three over two plus three over two will be equal to six over two, which is equal to three. So it'll be x squared minus three. Oops, here I should put an uh, x right here. So and then the last term will be plus z z s uh, z times z asterisk. So it'll basically be three over two plus one over two i times by three over two minus one over two i. So you can just do it yourself, or I, and but I already have an answer for expanding it, and it will be five over two. So five over two. And therefore, this is a quadratic equation. Like so. And lastly, we have um, some more example. Given that alpha equals seven plus two i, and it's one of the roots for a quadratic equation with real roots. State the value of the other root, beta. So specifically the complex conjugate of alpha, it means b equals the complex conjugate of alpha, which is equal to 7 minus 2i. So, and find the quadratic equation, and find the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta, and interpret the results. So I'm actually going to do the last question first, because the last question will, be, will help us to find the quadratic equation. So we have alpha equals, let me just see here, 7 plus 2i, and beta equals 7 minus 2i. Therefore, we can just find alpha, alpha plus beta quite easily. So therefore, alpha, oops, let me just see. Therefore, alpha plus beta equals 7 plus 2i, plus 7 minus 2i. The imaginary parts cancel out. I mean, you just add the real part, 7 plus 7. 7, oops, it will be 7 plus 7, which is 14. And then we have alpha beta, which is equal to 7 plus 2i, times 7 minus 2i. And basically, you, just, you can just do the difference of two squares method, which is equal to 49 plus 4 equals 53. And using the, the knowledge just now, we know that the quadratic equation is equal to x squared minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta equals zero. That means the quadratic equation, given that we already found alpha and beta and alpha plus beta and alpha beta on the, on the right, that means we know that the quadratic equation equals x squared minus 14i, sorry, 14x, and alpha times beta is equal to 53. So plus 53 equals zero. And that's the answer for this. And for the interpret uh, for the interpretation for the what they are, what what they mean is that basically alpha plus beta alpha plus beta is equal to the negative of um of the coefficient for b and alpha beta equals the constant term c or the, like the constant term c constant term and that's the final answer. And that's it for this rules and examples video for 1.4 for roots of quadratic equations. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never send any future videos. And if you have any comments or quantitative feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can leave them down below and I'll reply to them. And check out my social media in the description for example LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can put it on your browser at www.umiseasy.com And I hope you find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be questions for 1.4 for the root of quadratic equations. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.